Perched high in the mountains above Beverly Hills lies the longtime home of Anne Margaret, an actress, singer, dancer, and entertainment icon. Behind the gates of the Swedish born performer's home is a glimpse into old Hollywood glamour. For over 50 years, Anne Margaret has lived in this sprawling Benedict Canyon estate, a beautiful sanctuary she shares with her memories, awards, and mementos from her decades in show business. Beyond the gates, visitors are greeted by lush gardens, mature trees, and a long winding driveway that leads to her elegant contemporary style home. Built in 1938, this house is steeped in history, originally owned by Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. When Anne Margaret and her husband Roger Smith purchased it in the late 1960s, they knew that it was the perfect setting for the actress to retreat from fame. At 82, Anne still resides in the home where she's lived the majority of her life. Inside vivid photos capture her early career in wild times in Las Vegas. Costumes, vintage posters, and other memorabilia from her films adorn the walls, with each item representing a glamorous moment from her life's work. While the interior is straight out of old Hollywood, the 5,400 square foot house has been renovated to include four spacious bedrooms and four luxury bathrooms. The two-story floor plan flows seamlessly between modern upgrades as well as vintage architecture. Outside, the property sprawls over three acres of land. Mature oak and sycamore trees provide total privacy and seclusion, and a large pool shimmers in the California sun. According to sources, this home is probably now worth around $9 million. For Anne Margaret, this Benedict Canyon oasis is perfection. Though she often travels, she always returns to the comfort of this exclusive area. Her home sits among other celebrity mansions, yet being known as a very private person, Anne Margaret found her paradise protected high above the hustle of Hollywood. Long before she rose to fame, Anne Margaret Olsen was born in a small village in northern Sweden in 1941. Her father had immigrated to America but returned to Sweden and married her mother. When Anne Margaret was five years old, the family finally joined her father in Chicago. From early on, Anne Margaret's singing and dancing talents were clear. As a teen, she toured with various bands and orchestras. At the same time, she appeared on the Morris B. Sachs Amateur Hour, Don McNeil's Breakfast Club, and Ted Mack's Amateur Hour. She continued to star in theater as she attended New Trier High School in Winnetka, Illinois, the same school that had graduated fellow movie stars Charlton Heston and Rock Hudson. She went to Northwestern University after finishing high school and joined the Kappa Theta Alpha sorority. She wanted to study journalism, but she left school during her first year and chose to be part of a group known as the Subtle Tones which went to the Dunes Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. George Burns heard of her performance here and she auditioned for his annual holiday show in which she and Burns performed a soft shoe routine. And Margaret's charm caught the eye of Hollywood. She secured a contract with 20th Century Fox in 1961. That year, she made her film debut in Pocket Full of Miracles, starring alongside Betty Davis and Glenn Ford. For the role, she transformed her Swedish accent to all American. At the age of 23, Anne Margaret owned a 1964 Ford Falcon Sprint convertible, cherishing this as her very first car. While the Falcon may have been a modest choice for the young star, it held sentimental significance, given that her father also had a Falcon. In a memorable event, her father chauffeured her to the 1962 Academy Awards in his white Falcon, where she dazzled the audience by singing the theme song from Bachelor in Paradise. Anne Margaret's original Red Falcon went through a striking transformation when she brought it to George Barris, who not only repainted it pink, but also added a month's auto stereo tape deck. Anne Margaret's rise continued with State Fair in 1962 opposite Bobby Darin, but it was 1963's Bye Bye Birdie that cemented her status as a superstar. At only 21 years old, she lit up the screen as Kim McAfee, the wholesome teen who has a brief romance with a rock star. Her song and dance numbers showcase the talent and passion that would become her trademark. In 1964, Anne Margaret steamed up the screen with Elvis Presley in Viva Las Vegas. Her chemistry was undeniable both on and off screen. She proved that she was more than a bubbly starlet. By the late 1970s, Anne Margaret was firmly established as a multi-talented star at both comedy and drama. She earned her first Emmy nominee for a TV special in 1977. More nominations and awards followed as 
as her career skyrocketed through the next two decades. Today, her performance spans 100 films, countless TV shows, and various stage productions. Well, apart from her notable acting career, Anne Margaret's also recognized for her passion for motorcycles and her own perfume brand. When asked about her beauty philosophy, she says, there's no secret. I'm just happy and eating dessert first. I'm a sweets person. That's my favorite part of the dinner, dessert. In 1967, Anne Margaret married her husband, Roger Smith, and she took on the role of a mom to three non biological children. Their marriage endured an impressive 50 years, but sadly concluded with Roger Smith's passing on June 4th, 2017. Now an entertainment legend, Anne Margaret continues to perform occasionally and she brings the same enthusiasm that launched her career in the 1960s. Though her legendary status is cemented, she stays grounded in her Benedict Canyon sanctuary. Beyond the viewful terrace and manicured three acre grounds, her home guards price his memories. For Anne Margaret, the magic continued. She lived in her Beverly Hills home longer than any other and decades into her legendary career and her passion for performing continues to burn bright at 82. Well, that concludes today's house tour. Answer this question for me before you go. Who was your favorite leading lady to see alongside Elvis Presley back in the day? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video. I'll see you all in another one. Bye. As you might expect from a legend like Martha Stewart, she's lived in some beautiful properties over the years. I mean, her brand is all about cooking and home decor, so she makes sure the places that she calls home also match her image. Whether it's an upscale Hamptons retreat, a massive farmhouse, or a historic vacation home, Martha is living in style. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Martha Stewart is an American icon. Not only has she spent time as an entrepreneur, but she's also a world famous television personality and one time model inmate who over the years of her decade spanning career has earned a net worth estimated to be in the range of $400 million. These days, the Martha Stewart brand is still an integral part of Americana. So in that way, it's pretty fitting to discover that Martha has homes located all around the northeastern seaboard of the United States. In fact, she's been growing her real estate profile since the 70s and over the years, it's expanded to include half a dozen properties, only a few of which she actually actually spends much time in herself. For instance, the first property she ever picked up was a gigantic farmhouse located in Westport, Connecticut. Shortly after, she purchased another sprawling estate when she found a property located in the hamlet of Katona. And then there's Martha's stunning woodland retreat located on Mount Desert Island known as Skyland. And that's only the beginning of her homes. Hey guys, it's Kara, back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, this time checking out the homes of none other than Martha Stewart. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. Martha Stewart's first home became a labor of love between her and her then husband Andrew, who purchased this gigantic farmhouse together way back when in 1971 for the amazingly low price of just $46,750. Those were the days. At the time, they had dreams of turning what was already on this two acre plot into the perfect family home, but the original residence was in rough shape. First built back in 1805, by the time Martha got there, not only did the property have a seriously neglected Neglected backyard, but the picket fence was in shambles. The kitchen was in total disarray, and there was no porch, garage, driveway, or even a working toilet. Regardless, the couple got to work and undertook much of the renovations themselves. By 1975, the couple decided to expand further. They bought the lot located next to theirs for another $47,000. This time, they added two additional greenhouses, a chicken coop, an all seasons garden and a massive veggie garden, turning their home into a full fledged farm. Now, in terms of the interior of the main house, the original structure.
structure boasted three bedrooms and two bathrooms, but Martha would expand that count to five bedrooms and four and a half bathrooms, increasing the overall square footage to 6,710 square feet. Martha was so hands-on during the reno, she even got down on her hands and knees to stencil the wooden floors while also painting the remarkable mural that highlights the front hallway. Since moving here and undertaking all of these renovations, Turkey Hill, as it's come to be known, is what many people consider to be Martha's most iconic home. Not only did Martha fill its halls with some of her most enviable antiques, but it was in this very house that Martha would write several of her first cookbooks, including Entertaining, which gave her fans an in-depth look at her dining room. This was complete with her grandmother's china and even her mother-in-law's silver. Martha would live in this house for 30 years. She only moved out and started spending time in her litany of other properties in 2007. At that point, she sold the farmhouse for $6.7 million. Dubbed Cantito Corners, Martha Stewart's current sprawling farmhouse is 153 acres of land that she purchased back in 2000 for the whopping price of $15.2 million and located in Bedford, New York. Sold to Martha by the family of Ruth Sharp, a millionaire who had owned the property for 50 years before her passing, this estate is composed of several buildings strewn throughout the immense grounds, making it look more like a village than, say, a home. <laughs> when staying on this property, Martha resides in a three-story farmhouse first built in 1925 and often referred to as the Winter House. This structure features a spacious front porch, a fireplace, and stylish dormer windows. After taking on the property, Martha reached out to architect Alan Green to expand the main farmhouse. Not only did he turn an old garage that used to hold farming equipment into a brand new entertaining space just off the kitchen, but he also took a nearby barn and turned it into an office project room for Martha's endless amounts of arts and crafts. In addition to Martha's main residence, there's also a colonial structure that dates back to 1770, which once served as the original home for the property called, poetically enough, Summer House. There's also a cottage, a guest house known as Maple Avenue House, and a more contemporary home built towards the back of the property. Rounding things out are a series of horse stalls, barns, and greenhouses. And for a finishing touch, Martha imported cobblestone from Elizabeth, New Jersey, the state where she was born and raised, to pave the courtyards throughout the property. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, those two homes are fantastic. But when Martha's looking to get away for a little R&R, she also has a couple of vacation properties that are also enviable. Let's start with her historic house located in Maine. Martha calls it Skylands and it sits on Mount Desert Island. Like many of Martha's other homes, this property is steeped in history. Completed in 1925 for Edsel and Eleanor Ford of the Ford Motor Company, Skylands is sprawled across 63 acres of pristine woodland. The Ford family would summer here every year until 1980. 17 years later, Martha would buy the property for herself for $5.4 million in 1997. At the time of the sale, everything in the home was included, which meant that Martha didn't have to buy a single place, even though she's no doubt added her share over the years. The massive stone house sits on top of a hill and contains a dozen bedrooms alongside 8.5 baths and nearly 15,000 square feet of space. It also includes granite paving throughout the interior, beamed ceilings as well. Rounding out the additional spaces is a cathedral-like main hall, a sun-filled living room, a cool flower room, a stunning library, and a kitchen to die for. But as eye-catching as the interior of this place is, when Martha's spending time here, it's really all about those views. Over the years, Martha has taken to spending more and more of her free time here, and it's gradually become the favorite of her many homes. In 2015, she decided to expand the property by purchasing a $4.2 million six-acre neighboring estate called Ox Hill Law. This addition may be less grand than Skylands, but it still includes a main residence that boasts nine bedrooms, 7.5 bathrooms, and roughly 6,800 square feet of living space. Finally, we've come to Martha's Hamptons escape. She fell in love with the Hamptons during a summer spent at Kurt Vonnegut's home in the 90s and became so enchanted with the idea of living there that she found her own slice of heaven and purchased what has come to be known as Lily Pond Lane in 1995 for $3 million. First built in 1873, this shingled cottage space is just a 10 minute walk from the beach and at one point featured some truly stunning rose gardens that Martha eventually ripped out, worrying about the potential safety of her grandchildren. 
Much like with most of her other properties, once Martha moved in, she began to renovate thoroughly, while keeping many of the original fixtures to retain as much charm of the property as possible, Martha would touch up the cracked plaster ceiling, add additional windows to provide further natural lighting, and she even added a fresh coat of paint to replace the white walls with warmer buttercream tones. Meanwhile, outside is a garden lover's paradise. Not only are there gorgeously green private hedges, there are also trees and plants that run for about as far as the eye can see. In the event that gardening isn't your cup of tea, then you can spend time in either the gigantic pool or the even bigger front porch that houses a dining table capable of seating as many as 60 guests. Over the years, Martha would come here whenever she needed a little time to get away from it all. But being the busy person that she is, that didn't wind up happening all that often. As such, Martha eventually decided to sell this property for $8.4 million in 2021. All right, guys, that's going to bring this look at four of Martha Stewart's most remarkable properties to a close. Which one do you think suits Martha best? It's hard to choose, but maybe I'll go with her first farmhouse or her Hamptons getaway. Anyways, be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.